Snake bite, snake venom, and anatomy. How do those three go together? Also, why is a bloke in Britain talking about a snake bite? If you want to know about a snake bite, you talk to Australians, not... Anyway, okay, why? Um, I bumped into a friend of mine recently who reminded me of this story. You can look it up, it's in Wales Online, May 2019. I'm recording this in June. And um, uh, a couple were surfing in Llangeneth. This is Llangeneth. This is the view from Rosili and across, what, three miles of beautiful beach. There's Llangeneth in the distance where everybody goes surfing. It's one of the best surf beaches around. It's fantastic. And um, the couple were, I think they were returning from surfing. They'd been surfing and they were actually back in the car park. And the lady was bitten on the foot by a baby adder. Now, this is a baby adder that I found. This was back in Cheltenham, actually, up Cleve Hill. They're not particularly aggressive. I mean, this one is annoyed because some pillow's stuffing a camera in his face. But they bite only as a last resort. I've also seen adders on the gower, full grown ones, and they tend to be just out on the path, sunbathing, or a bit close to the path. Uh, normally they try and stay out of your way, they're hidden. So they're not dangerous, but they do bite if you actually, if you pick them up, don't pick them up, or if you step too close to them. And this lady, she was just in the car park, the snake was in short grass, you know, like uh, five, 10 centimeters long grass, and uh, she got bitten on the foot. She had two pinprick puncture wounds on the foot. Realised what had happened. I assume she saw the snake, hence her description of a baby adder, um, and didn't really think much of it. So they carried on, packed up, put the surfboards on the top and what have you, but then they went to hospital. And when she got to hospital, she became really, really ill. She started vomiting uncontrollably. She started shaking. She lost consciousness a few times. Um, so why? Why did it take 30 minutes? What happened? That's what we'll talk about. The anatomy will describe the delay, and I'm not gonna give you medical advice because I'm just an anatomist, what do I know? But I'm gonna tell you what the NHS advises you to do if you've been bitten, and then we're gonna relate that back to the anatomy. It's really interesting, it really is, honest. Um, the reason this story was reminded to me is because it turns out that lady is a friend of a friend. And my friend Ben said that she is now recovering, so she's recovered in hospital, she's now home, but now some weeks later, she is still recovering. So what can you do to prevent a snake bite causing you those sorts of problems? Okay, so let's see what the NHS advice is. Snake bites, there's a picture of an adder. They are beautiful snakes. Um, don't pick them up, right? Um, what to do after a snake bite? This isn't my advice, this is the NHS advice as of June 2019. Immediately after being bitten by a snake, you should remain calm and don't panic. I know that sounds really British, but there's a good reason for it and we'll find out why later. Snake bites usually aren't serious and they're only very rarely deadly. Well, it's not, I think the last person that died from an adder bite in Britain was in the 60s. Um, Try to remember the shape, size, and color of the snake. Identification, typically in Britain, they're, they're adders, but if you're in another country, that can be very helpful. Um, keep the part of your body that's been bitten as still as possible to prevent the venom spreading around your body. That's interesting. Remove jewelry and watches from the bitten limb as they could cut into your skin if the limb swells. So there are gonna be some local inflammatory effects. It's gonna swell around the bite mark, right? So prepare for that. Do not attempt to remove any clothing, but loosen clothing if possible. Oh, that seems like one of those standard things, isn't it? Seek immediate medical attention. That's the last one. Now, if you or someone you're bitten with, if you or someone you are with is bitten by a snake, you should not try to suck the venom out of the bite. Do you know why that is? Um, if you're not sure what the snake is, you can actually take a sample from around the bite and kill, extract the venom and work out what the venom is so you can apply the most appropriate anti-venom. Like I say, in Britain, this isn't a problem, but in other countries, if in Australia, that would be really useful. Do not try to cut the venom out of the bite or make it bleed. Don't think that... Yeah. Do not rub anything into the wound or apply ice, heat or chemicals. Do not leave someone who's been bitten on their own. 
Do not put anything around the bitten limb to stop the spread of venom, such as a tight pressure band, tourniquet or ligature, and we'll see why, as it won't help and could cause swelling or make it worse. It could also damage the limb, leading to the need for amputation. Do not try to catch or kill the snake because you're likely to get, someone else likely to get bitten. Also, it's not the snake's fault. You've identified this, anyway. Yeah. Dial 999, ask for an ambulance or go straight to accident and emergency. All right, so I promised you some interesting anatomy. Now what's going on here? When a snake bites you, it's not injecting the venom into the bloodstream. It's injecting the venom into whatever it happens to stick its teeth into. So it's gonna be injecting the venom into the subcutaneous tissues um, and the venom molecules tend to be quite large. They're not gonna pass through the walls of the, of the blood vessels and enter the bloodstream. Also, if it does bleed, I reckon that blood's probably gonna wash the venom out anyway, right? So they're aiming for the subcutaneous tissues. We're thinking about the lymphatic system now. Now, what do you know about the lymphatic system? Quick summary. You know that blood is pumped around the body in arteries and veins. Arteries take blood to the tissues, uh, the blood passes across capillaries and the blood is then collected by the veins and returned back to the heart. Some of those capillaries tend to be a little bit leaky. Fluid and other good things leak into the tissues. Not all of that fluid is collected by the veins, by the venous side of the circulatory system. The role, or one of the roles of the lymphatic system then, it's a, it's a one-way system, it's not a closed loop. They have, you have open-ended little fine lymphatic vessels in all of the tissues of the body, maybe. Well, all is a strong word, but you know what I'm getting at. The lymphatic vessels will collect that fluid and return it back to the circuitry system, back to the blood. Um, but they do it in a special way. The lymphatic system um, contains fluid under very low pressures. There's no pump, there's no heart. The lymphatic vessels do have valves in them, particularly the ones in the, in the lower limbs. Um, and the larger lymphatic vessels have a, a muscular wall, um, so they can weakly peristaltically squeeze fluid along them. But there are other mechanisms in play, such as the changing pressures within the thorax and the abdomen that pulls fluid into the thorax and what have you. And at the, at the beginnings of these lymphatic vessels, these lymphatic capillaries, um, there are flap-like valve openings within the tissues, which are large enough for cellular debris and bugs and, as in like bacterial bugs, not, and, um, venom molecules to move into very, very easily. So let's put all that together. The snake bites you on the foot because that's the thing that's, that's closest. It'll bite you on the hand if you've picked it up, which is why it's not a good idea to pick them up. It bites you on the foot, it injects the venom into the subcutaneous tissues, into the water of the subcutaneous tissues. That venom is then gonna get pulled into the lymphatic capillaries and it's gonna to start to go up the lower limb. And there are superficial lymphatic vessels and there are deep lymphatic vessels within the limb. They're following the veins back up the lower limb. Um, they will encounter maybe popliteal lymph nodes back here, and then superficial and deep inguinal lymph nodes up here. Um, and one of the things that happens in the lower limb is that, I mean, you, you've noticed this if you've been sat down for a long period of time or sat on a long flight, your, your feet tend to get a bit swollen and puffy and your shoes don't fit anymore. And that's because largely the lymphatic system hasn't been working very well. It hasn't been pulling the fluids that have been collecting in your tissues back up into your body. So movement is important. The muscle the musculovenous pump, the movement of the muscles within the fascia, squeezes and relaxes around the veins and they, that aids the, ve the, the pushing of blood out of the lower limb uh, and back up into the thorax. And the same principle is acting upon the lymphatic system. So movement of the lower limb, squeezing of those, of those lymphatic vessels, vessels is helping to push the lymph up the lower limb. Ah. So that's why if you've been bitten by a snake, you should remain still. Hmm, okay. Because then you don't activate those mechanisms that pull the lymph out of the body. But why hasn't it gone into the blood yet? Where's it going? Well, when it gets back up into the pelvis, it's still got quite a long way to do. Right, let's take all, the, all of this stuff out. So 
we can see lymphatic lymph nodes here and lymphatic vessels, right? So from the lower limb, these are representations of lymphatic vessels. They drain to the superficial inguinal lymph nodes, then to the deep inguinal lymph nodes. If those lymphatic vessels have already drained to deeper ones, then they'll go straight to the deep inguinal lymph nodes. And then they're going to run up into the pelvis. Remember, they're following the veins. They're going to run back here. They're going to meet all other lymph nodes. Eventually, they'll get to a structure called the cisterna chile. And then that lymph will pass into a tube called the thoracic duct. The thoracic duct is going to run in the posterior thorax and the posterior mediastinum is going to loop all the way back up to here and this is where the lymph from the foot will be emptied into the circuitry system. This is the venous angle. We've got the internal jugular vein here meeting the subclavian vein here on the left side and there become the brachiocephalic vein there. So that lymph then gets put back into here and then bam, then it's back into the circuitry system. Then it goes back to the heart. Then that snake venom is gonna whiz around the body and the billions of years of evolution of that snake venom is then gonna have an effect. So the venom injected at the foot has gotta travel a really long way through small tubes that don't have their own pump before the venom will get into the cardiovascular system and have systemic effects. And that's when you become really ill. That's when the venom starts to take effect. So that's why you stay still and stay sat down. If you read the Australian guidance, they say things like splint the legs together, you know, so the person can't move their legs uh, and, and, and stretch the, the, the patient to hospital, to a vehicle, to a hospital. So you don't get up and walk it off because you'll speed up rapidly the rate at which the venom is gonna pass through the, the lymphatic system and back to the circulatory system and bam, then it's gonna have a big effect. The NHS guidance talked about remaining calm. Now, the lymphatic system is under such low pressure, but it's right next to arteries and veins in a confined space. So the pulsation of the arteries also helps push the lymph along the lymphatic vessels. So if you, if you have a high heart rate and, and you're really worried and panicking, that's gonna accelerate the lymphatic flow as well. It's unfair, isn't it? So stay calm if you've been bitten by a snake. Um, now the advice about tourniquets, you could apply a compression bandage of the appropriate compression to squash the lymphatic vessels and impede flow. But that's a very difficult thing to do in the field if you're not well trained, so it's not recommended. Um, a tourniquet is even worse because, of course, if you apply a tourniquet to a limb, you'll cut the blood supply off to the limb and you'll have to occasionally loosen off that tourniquet. And when you do that, blood's going to rush into the limb, blood's going to rush out of the limb, and that movement is going to help squeeze the lymph along the lymphatic vessels, and it'll, it'll pass out of the limb very, very quickly and back into the circuitry system. Do you see? So all of that guidance is related to anatomical structures. Snake venom passes in the lymphatic system. If you've been bitten by a snake, you need to slow down the action of the lymphatic system to delay that venom getting into the circuitry system to a point where you can be treated with anti-venoms and other critical hair methods. Isn't that cool? Functional and that, it's the pub fact maybe at least. Anyway, right, that's it. That's what I wanted to talk about today. <laughs> See you guys next week.